I, hello, dear friends. I am going to give you my thought on Jeremiah 29 11 for this morning. For I. For I know the plans for you to prosper you and not to harm you, to build hope and to give you a future. Now, that reminds me of a story. There was a pastor who wanted to go hunting. It was one of the things he really liked to do. So, him and his wife decides to take a one-week sabbatical, and they go, and they, um, they go hunting. Well, one, well, one of the days that they went hunting, they're on this mountain ledge, and they see this deer, and they're going after it with their bows and their arrows and whatever else they have with them, their knives. And they get to this ledge that when they go to when they go to shoot the deer, they take a wrong step and they go tumbling down this hill. So as they're tumbling down the hill, welcome to my office <laughs> but they go down this hill and as they're going down this hill they're tumbling and stuff is flying off them their knives are flying you know are kind of falling out of their pocket out of their sheaths the bows and the arrows are falling out you know they let go of the bow because they're trying to keep themselves from being hurt more than what they are as they're tumbling down the arrows go flying out of their quiver and they fall down and between them when they stop they're on top of each other with two broken legs between them and his wife is just trying to figure out a way to try to come for him as he's trying to find a way to get them out of their trouble and just as they think it can't get any worse they look up and there's this big hungry bear just staring at them and they're like this ain't good so they're sitting there, and they're trying to go through their options. And as they're going through their options, this bear takes takes off, just shoots right toward them, getting closer and closer. And the pastor is putting his hands together, and he's like, I don't know what else to do. So he's like, dear Lord, we thank you for the bountiful pleasure that we almost had from that deer. We thank you for what the life around us, and we thank you for the life we've had. We don't know what else to do. And, of course, you know, we're trying to help people get closer to you. But we are praying for this bear to be a Christian bear. And the bear is pouncing closer and closer and closer. And right as he's about to jump on him, the bear is shooting right toward him step after step and right as he gets in front of him he drops on his butt puts his front paws together and he says dear lord i thank you for this food i'm about to partake <laughs> now that's not exactly the plans the pastor had You know, he was trying to find a way to save his life. Because people don't want to die. Are they scared of, you know, if you're in Christ, are you scared of dying? No. You shouldn't be. Do you want to die? No. But you shouldn't be scared of it either. Because we know where we are going. I'm saying this because it brings me back to Jeremiah 29. I love that joke. I think it's great. But it also brings up a very very strong point and that is the fact that God died for us and he promises in Jeremiah 29 11 that that he has plans for us and he knows what we're going to go through and he knows what we're going what's going to happen but he does not in any way shape or form promise that he's going to give you what you need at that very moment just like that pastor who <laughs> had no idea what to do. He knew he was not in the greatest shape. That fell over, that's not good. But he knew he was not in the greatest shape. And he 
wasn't looking for God. To, he was kind of hoping God would save him, but he's not exactly looking for God to save him. He's just asking for God's will to be done. And the God's will was for the bear to get some food. And that's not what he had planned, but that's what happened. So thus saying that, sometimes in life, God promises that we're going to prosper and not we're not going to be harmed. It doesn't mean we're not going to be hurt. It means that we're not going to be harmed. And the fact that when we die, and there's all kinds of ways to look at this, but he says, the plans I have for you is not to harm you, but to prosper you. And I said that a little bit backwards, but I like the way it's worded that way. And it's the same thing as what he says, just backwards. And the reason why I say it that way, because his intent is not for us to be harmed. We was born in God's world, and we messed up. Adam was born in a perfect world, a perfect environment. And when Adam was born, or was created, and Eve was created out of Adam, they were in the Garden of Eden, and God had a plan for us to live with him in constant companionship, and to multiply, and to have more kids, and to be able to live with him. So his purpose, and his meaning for our lives, was to live with him. Now... Does that now does Jeremiah 29 say, 11 say that he's going to carry you out of every harm and problem? No, not at that moment. He's going to have a solution, but it's not always the solution that we want when we want it. It might not be the answer to what we want at that time. So keep that in mind that God has a purpose, a meaning, and a reason for you to do what you do. But your answers are, you're going to go through hard times because it's not in his timing. Sometimes it's meant to help you grow, that you go through a hard time. Sometimes it's done to help you teach somebody else. People say it's a season, and they're right. When you go through a hard time, it is a season. But Jeremiah 29, 11 says, in the end, he promises that his plans are going to prosper you, whether it's here on earth or in heaven. So I'm going to ask you to like and subscribe and to share and to comment your thoughts. You guys be blessed and be praised.